Are you ready to learn to get rid of stress in your life? To learn how to deal with the emotional turmoil that causes strokes, heart attacks, bad health, and even weight gain? Life-changing habits for work, family, and everyone you deal with start here with Andrew Whitman. It's time to get warrior tough. Here's Andrew Whitman and Dutch Coleman. All right, it's time to get warrior tough. Spring is upon us. Dutch, I heard the weather was warm up up in Pennsylvania, but you're not even there. You're on spring break traveling from who knows. You're from some exotic, undisclosed location. Is that right? (laughs) Absolutely. I'm in the the research triangle, specifically the Durham-Chapel Hill area, uh, making my rounds. I visited UNC Chapel Hill today and visited some friends that work for the university in in athletic capacity and and just having a ball. It's, It's about 80 degrees now here today. Dude, I you know I was I, after my workouts because I did like three today. I had to go sun because I got to get ready for bikini season, man. So I got to really work out on my girlish figure. So, um, <laughs> 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 hey y'all, if you want to get in on the conversation on Twitter, use the hashtag Get Warrior Tough. You can find Dutch the, at the Dutch Coleman. I'm at Warrior Tough PhD. Check out the website GetWarriorTough.com. Also, the call in number is 855-856-1380, 855-856-1380. And you can talk to Dutch and I live on the air. Okay, so Dutch, this has been a it's, a, it's a great time of year. It's fantastic. You know, things are growing. And you know, one of the things that I, I, one of my mantras is you're either growing or dying. So I love this time of year where things are just growing. The trees are budding. It's just, it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm energized and rejuvenated, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I, I'm, this is, this is the, uh, what did they say? The, the the season for new beginnings uh where things are blossoming things are blooming and um this is that time yeah it's fantastic now listen we got a ton of questions that have come in this week so i want to hit it hit the ground running because i always want to know what you think and we want to get these folks uh the answers to their questions so the first one that i got this week i got it several times (laughs) andrew why did you write the book right so because ground zero leadership ceo of you is out Right. Oh, I'm just dropping it everywhere. Right. So I'm showing the camera right there what it is. They're flying off the shelf. Hey, shout out to Amber J. Um, she wrote a fantastic press release. It, w- it went all over the place, picked up by like a thousand news outlets, and it was on Yahoo Finance, picked it up. So that was pretty cool, you know, to see that and see um, all her hard work out there on, you know, the messaging and all that. Also, um, so they're asking me. So the book is starting to get attention, right? It's getting tweeted out. Why you write the book, Andrew? So, hey, you know, I, I was the fat kid in high school. I was 5'3", 185 pounds, and my nickname was Beach Ball. And I got bullied and kicked around like a beach ball, right? And I was never allowed to fight back. My mom and dad were missionaries, and I was never allowed to fight back. And I just thought, you know, I can't live my life like this. So um, I, I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps back in 1985. I got an infusion of leadership and mental toughness. And I lo- it was like a drug for me because it changed everything. It ordered my thoughts. I got control of myself. And I said, you know what, and, and began to dominate my body. That was the first piece. That's really what they teach you in, in the warrior culture, dominate your body. And so then I just made it my lifelong thing to get my entire boardroom, body, mind, and emotions under control. And this is a culmination of that. Uh, really, it's a 30, 31 year journey now because I'm 49. I'm almost 50. And I started when I was 18. And that's what the book is. This is just like all the stuff. And, and I was talking um, to somebody this week. I can't remember who it was. But we were saying that it's really uh, like it's almost like a chef, right? Because I take some stuff from the warrior culture, stuff from law enforcement, stuff from my political background, stuff from the State Department, stuff from my theological background, stuff from the cognitive neuroscience, stuff from the psychology. And we mix it all together, and we came out with you know what we have as the content. And I, it, it is transformational, Dutch. So that's why I wrote the book, man. Hey, man, brother. And it was, it was much needed. You know, I, I think... Writing the book is one of those things where you want to document uh, things for generations to come, and that's what books are. That's why they, I believe they started is to is to transfer uh, that information uh, 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 to a wider audience. And I think all the things, all your experiences, all the uh, things you've seen and done are now documented in uh, one place for for the people to enjoy. Yeah, and not just that, but it's a do- it's a duplicatable process. And I'm like Forrest Gump. You guys heard me say that all the time, right? If I could do it, you, anybody could do it. I just Forrest Gump the stuff. So it's very simple. It's practical. It is not theory. It is only stuff that has worked for me. Now, I'm not telling you that it'll everything that I do will work for you. I'm just telling you what worked for me, and it's worked for me very, very well. And a lot of our clients, a lot of our clients, I'm sounding like Donald Trump, lots and lots of people, millions of people, lo- you know, have had success with this stuff. So, um now, we've had this other question come in, Dutch, and, and people say, you know, Andrew, you guys are always talking about that you could rise to the top of any field. How? Right? I was, well, you know, 
really, and this is why we wrote the book as well, right? Because it's about taking complete control of yourself. And in Ground Zero Leadership, CEO of you, what we do is teach people exactly how the human machine works and how to be in complete control of yourself. And as CEO of you, your job is to get, a, get your board of directors to act in concert for your betterment. Now, we all know the board as our body, our mind, and our emotions. And, you know, I ask our audiences all over the country, when they have, sit down and have a boardroom meeting with themselves, who usually wins the vote, body, mind, or emotions? Well, have you ever made an emotional decision? Well, you know, how'd that work <laughs> out, right? So, when you, so this is how you get to the top, right? You cannot hide weak leadership in a crisis, no matter your position, no matter your title, your pay grade, even the lowest volunteer intern, right? Everyone will look to the person who is in control of themselves in a crisis. So if you walk into the office, any field that you're in, well, it, it, athletics, it doesn't matter. You could be the lowest paid volunteer intern. If you are in complete control of yourself, everyone will look to you because they're not in control of themselves. And then it's just a hop, skip, and a jump to the top. Literally that fast, no kidding. That's how I became the agent in charge of Nancy Pelosi's detail. And I'd only been on the job for three years. Hey, Amen. I mean, it, 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 it seems like such a uh, such a difficult task when you first mention it. And then when you simplify it like that, you know, people, you can, I can, I can see that people are nodding their heads like, you know what? He's right. You, because many of you listening have been in a similar situation and realized that it was that simple. And, that, and at least that's the beginning of, of that ascent to, to where you want to be. Right. And along with that question, they said, okay, so if I want to reach the upper levels of management, this is more, this is a little, you know, not just the top of any field, but this is in business. It's a corporate question. If I wanted to reach the upper level, levels of management, what steps would you recommend to me to get the ball rolling? Well, uh, yeah. hey, man, before a leader can influence anybody else, they must first influence themselves, right? This is, again, ground zero leadership. It starts with us at ground zero. So you got to take complete control of your thoughts, your feelings, and your attitudes. And most people, they really have no physical process for thinking their thoughts, Dutch. It's just a jungle up there, right? So mm -hmm. yeah. the first, to get the ball rolling, to get the upper levels of management, what you really have to do is implement an actual physical process to think your thoughts, which we call thinking like, and I'll let you say it if you'll use that language on the air. Crap. Thinking like crap, right. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's all about clarity, relevance, accuracy, and precision. Right, so it, that's our thought. We I run every thought through those four filters. The very first thing is what's my target? That's clarity. I got to get clear on what it is that I do want, not what I don't want. People constantly are saying what they don't want. Just listen to your own self talk. When we say, well, someone will ask you what you want, and they'll say, well, I don't want that. I was I was coaching somebody last weekend, Dutch, and I was just kind of walking them through the process. And I said, well, tell me what it is that you don't want. You know, what do you want your life to look like? Well, she said, well, I don't really want to have a lot of money. I didn't ask you that. I asked you what you did want, not what you don't want. I said, but why would you say that? She said, well, because I think people who have a lot of money aren't happy. I said, who told you that? <laughs> right? I said, let's do an experiment. You give me all of your money for the next two weeks, and you go without, and we'll see if that, that makes you happy. Well, of course, it's ridiculous. <laughs> right? But so, again, we, it's, a, it's just a jungle up there, man. There's just all kind of stuff. So if you really want to get the ball rolling, you have to order your thoughts. Now, Dutch, you know, I mean, you've been working this process for a while, and a lot of our clients say it. I had one client on the Phalanx coaching call last night said that I use this formula too much. That's what he said. I use crap too much. I'm like, no, you can't, man. <laughs> that is hilarious. I, you know, the, the funny thing is that when you think about what it takes uh, to be, you know, the one thing that we've talked about this before is reinventing the wheel. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. If I'm thinking, the first thing I thought of when you said, how do I get to the top of any field? First of all, I've, I have to determine what the top means. Nice. Because the top means different things to different people, right? Yep. So I want to know what the top means. I want to find out who's at the top. And guess what else I can do? I can find out how they got there. And, and, and sure enough, there's going to be different people at, di at, at different things considered the top. And I find out the various ways they got there. And I pick out the best of all those situations that fit me, what I can control, what I'm capable of. And I begin to plot my path to the top, whatever the top is. So that's, that's the first thing I would do myself. That's awesome. I, and, this, and again, so here you are thinking like crap in real life, real time. Because I'm saying a question... How can you, and part of that thinking like crap formula is accuracy is the difference between fact and truth. Rise to the top 
is a truth, not a fact. See, facts are mm-hmm. like right. Fact is, let's like seventy-two. What'd you say? It was eighty degrees outside, right? Today, right. where you were at. Now you, you're coming from like the Poconos and State <laughs> College. So, what was your truth? <laughs> that it was what? My, that it was freezing cold up there. So, and now so down here, it's what? It's very hot. Right. So it's hot, <laughs> right? But now, if I had been down in Miami, right, where it was ninety-eight. You know, in the shade, and then I came up to Chapel Hill, and it was 80. I'd be like, wow, it's really nice. It's cool. It's brisk. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really nice and breezy. Right. So the fact is it was 80 degrees. The truth is my perception of the fact. So when someone says rise to the top of anything, the first thing that you did was say, I need to define, clearly define the target, and that's what clarity is. You're trying to get clarity. What does that even mean? What's that mean to you? I love that. Dude. I mean, that was your instinctive reaction, and that's what we're talking about is ordering your thoughts. Well, you, you know, the funny thing is that you're talking about uh, thinking about crap. Uh, we've been doing this so long that the process is natural to us. Right. So we don't when me and you sit down and make a decision, we don't go, OK, OK, clarity. You know, oh, OK, relevance. Oh, OK, accuracy. Oh, OK, precision. When you've done the process so many times in your life, the first question is clarity. You, you automatically go to that. Now, when you're, when you're beginning at the CEO of you level and you're learning this, then you're actually sitting down, you're actually plotting the process, and you're thinking about it, and you're using clarity, relevance, accuracy, precision. But once you've done thought like crap uh, uh, for a period of time, right. then it naturally happens. You naturally uh, think about clarity without thinking about the word clarity, but your thoughts become clear. You think about the things that are clear. Then you think about the things that are relevant. You don't write down relevant, but you naturally think because once you that process becomes a natural part of your thinking. And, and so I don't say relevant, but I only think about the things that are relevant. I don't think about accuracy, but I become accurate. You know, you so these things become a part of you. So you're no longer thinking like that because we told you thinking like crap becomes what you who you are and what you do naturally so that's what we're trying to get the people to and the ceo of you is just the beginning of that to begin to ingrain to, to, to instill that process and impress that process upon you naturally right and so I, I i liken it to driving a car when you first started driving a car now i got a couple teenagers right and they've been learning how to drive and i like drew's 18 now so when i first was teaching him to drive when he was 15 so he's driving for almost three years now it was, it was all herky jerky everything was just trying to be conscious of every right so but now He'd be like, turn down for what? The radio's on. He's back. He's pimping it. He's got his aviators on. He's like, what up? Right? And so now it's just autopilot. It's automatically, he's already, he's making all these life and death decisions without even thinking about them consciously. They're happening outside of his, you know, his conscious, that 126 bits of information per second. So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we do when we walk you through the, and CEO of you, like Dutch said, that's the beginning. And then into Phalanx now, I think we're like, with this group that we have right now, we're like week 14 of the Phalanx. They're really starting to get it. They're really starting to enjoy the benefits of thinking like this on an automatic basis. Which and that's when it's life starts to get fun because you start picking stuff out right away. Absolutely. And, and so you can, you can realize that you just did those things like, wow, I just... I just, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> and it's weird because you, you begin to see yourself uh, fulfilling like all, all of your, your learning. And, and, it, and it's really fun. It's, again, talking about the driving a car, for the people who are old enough to remember five speeds, you know, when you first learn how to drive a five speed, you're, you're actually going one, shit, first gear, second gear, and, you, and you're feeling it. And you're fi- By the t- after a few years, I mean, you never even think about changing gears it just happens naturally you're changing gears you're doing it you're downshifting you're doing all these things and never thought about it again and that's what thinking like crap becomes after a while you never even think about crap you're thinking like crap naturally and, and, it, and it's such a beautiful thing and you when you first realize that you've done it the first couple of times without having to to organize your thoughts you're gonna be so proud of yourself it's, it's going to feel really good. That is awesome. And uh, let me just say, I, I got so good with the five-speed that I would shift gears without ever using the clutch, just timing the engine. Dude. <laughs> That's when it's fun. I learned that in D.C. traffic because I kept, I'm like, I'm going to wear every clutch out if I do that. I got to, you know, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> That's so much fun. All right, so well, this is a great conversation, Dutch, because I we're talking about my most favorite thing in the seconds. world. Most favorite thing in the world is how to take complete control of my thoughts because I already know that the thoughts are the root cause of all of our results in life. And if you don't like the results that you're getting, 
right? Get in touch with us and we'll walk you through the process and take it all the way. That's the, you know, to the beginning of thinking your thoughts, order that process, go through your behaviors, and it's going to be fantastic uh, on the back end, but there is work on the front end. Okay, so we're up on a break, Dutch. Uh, we'll be right back. You're listening to the Get Warrior Tough Radio Show with Dutch Coleman and Andrew Whitman. <laughs> 